journalism for a while represented everybody. Um, and then as more and more outlets started to shrivel and die, became corrupt isn't exactly the right word, but it has the right feel to it. Many young people believe that mainstream media has a credibility issue and that much of what they do is riven with agenda. Usually I go online to look um, for news on the blogs because I don't really trust what the news channels on TV tell us. A lot of people suggest because we had early reporting on weapons of mass destruction that turned out to be flawed that we were helping the U.S. government exercise an agenda. Journalism is always trying to persuade us of stuff, in my opinion. All journalism. An act of persuasion accompanied by information. Reporting is dirty, hard, complicated business, and it's not always going to be perfect. And sometimes the story changes on you. Well, if you go back to why we uh, started with this thing, the press, it was because we wanted to give more people a role in how their nation was governed and open up politics not just to the princes and the people who knew the king, but to the people who were actually affected by what government did. With Johannes Gutenberg's invention of the printing press in 1496, a new era of knowledge and information came into being with the Renaissance, a time when information was again available to the public. Soon came regular periodicals, and the first English newspaper, the London Gazette, was published in 1665. And that's when the press arose, because in order to have people who can help steer their society, you need some way of telling them about stuff. During the American Revolution, the colonial press grew from 14 newspapers in 1750 to 89 newspapers in 1770. The American revolutionaries used the press to propagate their new ideas to a wide number of colonists and gain support for democracy and revolution. The U.S. experienced a rapid growth in newspapers to the point where, in 1893, the term yellow journalism was coined to describe the sensationalized news that papers were utilizing to drive up circulation. Joseph Pulitzer's World and William Randolph Hearst's New York Journal were two such publications. In response, the New York Times added the moniker All the News That's Fit to Print to the top of its front page in an attempt to separate themselves from the competing papers. And under the leadership of Adolf Ock, the Times strove to become one of the nation's most credible news sources and soon achieved international circulation and reputation. You've got to read the New York Times. The New York Times is on every editor's desk, every politician's desk, every influential person's desk in the world, and you need to know what they know. We like that. I mean, as humans, we sort of want to know what everybody else knows. We want that baseline. I view it as a breathtaking prism on current events and one that is absolutely irreplaceable. The World Wide Web, which is a platform that sits on top of the internet, was designed originally to make it possible for any piece of information, no matter where it is on the internet, to be shared with someone else, no matter where they are on the internet. The internet stuff came along and became uh, obvious to me that this stuff is actually much more exciting. People who started uh, simply by collecting links that were of interest to themselves and their friends, that's how blogging started. Blogging is just a very loose description of anybody who uh, has a website and an opinion. Point of view writing often arrayed over idiosyncratic interests. Blogs um, are kind of the Talmudic commentary on the text, the text being the kind of traditional outlets. That hews to none of the conventions of traditional journalism. It was just stuff I found on the internet that I thought was cool. Why should I keep it to myself? I'll put it on this sheet. And the passion of these bloggers is what makes it 
makes them successful. We have certainly given people the tools and said, now you have a blog, go use it. Hey, here's a digital camera, go use it. I saw the web as an incredibly efficacious, elegant publishing tool that at that time had no business model attached to it. 